Hey, Sad. Mm, no. Mm -hmm. You should probably begin at the beginning, he said. Change. First, there is a change, which nobody likes, even men. You'd be surprised. You can do little things, putting cream on the corners of your mouth, also the heels of your feet, but here is the main thing. Oh, I wish your mother was alive, not that she had time. But Pa, I said, Mama never knew about um, anything about cream. I did not say that. I did not say she was famous for not taking care. Forget it. Yeah, keep going. Oh, forget it, he said sadly. But I must mention the squinting. Don't squint. Wear your glasses. Look at your aunt, so beautiful one. Once, I know someone has said. Men don't make passes at girls who wear glasses, but that's an idea for a foolish person. There are many handsome women who are not exactly 2020. Good. Okay. And so what we've got here is a father and a daughter. The father is obviously very old. The daughter is middle-aged. She has kids. Um, and the father's like telling her, you know, what to do with her life. Can you guys hear me? Okay, uh, I think my my screen is frozen. Um, yeah, it is. So I'm gonna leave and come right back. Hold on one sec. Awesome. Uh, hold on. Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny. And let's have Adela. Can you read the next part? Hey, please sit down. He said, "Be patient. The main thing is this: when you get up in the morning, you must take your heart in your two hands. You must do uh, this every morning." That's a metaphor, right? Metaphor? No, no. You can do this in the morning, do a few little exercises for the joints, not too much. Then put your hands like a cup over and under the heart, under the breast. He said tactfully, tactfully. It's probably easier for a man. Then talk softly, don't yell. Under your ribs, push a little. When you walk up, you must do this message. I mean, but stroke a light. Don't be a schmidt. Uh, where likely no one uh, will be watching. Then you must talk to your heart. Okay, let's look at ashamed. Ashamed. Stroke a little. A little. Uh, a little, a little. Massage. Massage. Wake up. Wake up. Exercises. Exercises. And metaphor. Metaphor. Patient. Patient. Good. Okay. And Heidi, can you read? Whoops! Can you read the next part, Heidi? Talk what? Say anything, but uh, be respectful. Say maybe say hurt, little hurt, a bit softly, but never forget your job. The breath you can uh, whisper also remember. Remember.
uh, for instance, I said to it yesterday, Hart, Hart, do you remember my brother, Grisha, how he made work for you that that day when he came to the st uh, store and he said, we are both money. Uh, then, yeah, right now, how, um, how he put a gun in my face and I said, Grisha, are you crazy? Why don't you ask me at home? I would give you. Uh, we were in the America, in this America, not more than two years. He was only a kid. And he said, he said, who needs your workers' money for the moment, uh, for the movement, only from your boss? Uh, oh, oh, little heart, you worked uh, like a, a bastard, like a dog, uh, like a crazy thread. Bang, bang, bang that day. Remember uh, that the story I told my heart yesterday. My father said, "What a rocket! Uh, it, what a what a rocket it make make to answer me." I remember, I remember, till well, I was dizzy, dizzy with the uh, thumping. Yes. So I was dizzy with the thumping. Uh, till I was dizzy with the thumping. What the thump, thumping? Thumping is like boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. Okay. It's like a bass, a repetitive bass sound. Um, your boss is. Your boss is money. Nice. Okay. And that sounded good. Um, so his brother robs him for a movement. And let's have Julieta. Can you read the next part? Why'd you do that, Pa? I don't get it. Don't you see? This is good for the old heart to get exercised. Just as good as uh, for the person. Some people go running till late in life for the muscles, they say, but the heart knows the real purpose. The purpose is the expansion of the arteries, a river of blood. It cleans off the banks, carries junk out of the system, I myself would rather re remind the heart how frightened I was by my brother than go running in a strange neighborhood with the CD days. I said, oh, but then I said, well, thanks. One more. I don't, I don't think you listened, he said, as usual probably worried about the kids. They are not babies, you know, eyes wouldn't have so many. Okay, good. Arteries. Can you repeat arteries? Okay. I can't hear you. You might have okay. a connection. Yeah, I can hear. Uh, arteries. Mm, maybe not anymore. <laughs> and also excited. I don't know if you can hear me, um, but excited was the other one. Okay. Um, and Adara, can you read the next part? I stopped uh, by a couple of weeks later. This time, he was annoyed. Why did you leave the kids home? If you keep doing this, they forget who I am. Children are like old people in that mm -hmm. respect. They won't forget you, Pa, never in a million years. You think so? God has not been so good about a million years. His main interest in us began, act began actually. He put it down in writing 56, 5700 years ago. In the book, you know our book, I suppose. Okay, yes. Actually. Actually. Yeah, actually. Um, all right, really well done. <laughs> so the first time he tells her to send the kids outside, 
And then the next time she comes over, she stops by a couple of weeks later, he's annoyed. She's like, why'd you leave the kids at home? Um, so, just funny. So, Mohammed Mahmoud, welcome to class. How's it going? Fine. Um, nice. Welcome to class. We're talking about a story. Um, it's titled, My Father Addresses Me on the Facts of Old Age. Um, so, it's just a mother of, you know, a father and a daughter talking. Um, and okay. Yeah. And... Adela, can you read this next little part? Uh, probably a million years is too close to his lifetime. If you could call it the life, what he goes through. I believe it, uh, he says several times when he was still in contact with us. I'm a surus God. Here and there, he makes an exception. I read there are 3,000 years old trees somewhere in some uh, God forsaken place. Of course, that how come they are still alive? alive. And we should all uh, be so God forsaken. Good, I, God I forsaken. Know. That was good, God forsaken. Uh, God forsaken. Uh-huh. And I'm a jealous. I'm a jealous. 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 Good. Really well done. And let's have Mahmoud. Can you read the next part? What, what's the meaning of uh, God forsaken? God forsaken means it's abandoned by God. Uh -huh. Um. So when we say God-forsaken places, we talk about like deserts, places with no life, um, things that you know God has abandoned, and it's it's kind of like a curse. Um, yeah. So we could we could also call somebody God-forsaken. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Just people. Okay. okay. Uh. But. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, but no more joking around. I've been thinking what to tell you now. First of all, soon, maybe in 20, 30 years, you'll begin to get up in the morning, 4, 5 a.m. Uh, in a farmer, that's okay, but for us, you will remember everything you did, didn't what you omitted, whom you insulted, betrayed, betrayed it. that's the worst. Uh, do you remember you didn't go see your aunt? She was dying. That will be on your mind like a stone. Of course, I myself did not behave so well. Still, I was so busy those days. Long office hours, remember it, was usual in those days. For doctors to make house calls. No elevators, fourth floor, fifth floor even in a nice prong, pronix tenement. But this morning, I mean this morning, a few hours ago, my mother, your papashka, came into my mind. Look at me. Looked at me. Looked at me. Uh, babushka. Babushka, what's the meaning of babushka? It's... Um... It's like, I, I don't know if it's actually Jewish or Russian. Um, I think it's your mother um, or your grandmother. Babushka would be grandmother. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, yeah, Judith, I believe they are um, Russian Jews that immigrated to the U.S. Um, at least the family was. See you later. Um, a stone. Can you repeat stone? Stone. A stone. That's a hard one to write. And then betrayed. 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 Good. Uh, betrayed. And like I said, guys, keep writing your questions about any words in the chat box because I do want to get through this if we can. Um, Heidi, can you read the next part? Have I told you I was arrested? Of course I did. I was arrested a few times. 
but this time for some reason the policeman walks me uh, past the office of the local jail. My mom was there. I saw or her through the window. She was bringing me a bundle of cream clothes. She put it on the officer's table. She turned, uh, she saw me. She looked at me uh, through the glass with such a face, eye to eye. Uh, this fire, no hope. This morning, 4 a.m., I saw uh, once more how she sat there, very straight. Her eyes, uh, beca uh, because of that look, I did my turn and my sentence the best I could. I finished up six months in uh, 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 yeah, Archangelis. I don't know. Yeah, they finally sent me. Then no more, no more. I said to myself, no more a uh, saving uh, in uh, imperial Russia, the great pogrom uh, maker uh, from itself. And then the last little part there. Okay, pa. Yeah. Um. So pogrom is like a a riot, um, and it it was often a riot that was aimed against like religious or ethnic groups. Um, especially in Russia, it was aimed against Jews. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a it's not a genocide, but it's like a riot that's aimed at killing or attacking certain people, um, especially Jews in the Russian Empire, um, would be a pogrom. So that's the great pogrom maker. So the Russian Empire made or incited a lot of pogroms, if that makes sense. Does that make sense, Judetta? Um, yes. Okay. Imperial? Uh, Heidi, Imperial? Imperial. And Despair. Despair. Okay. And... Judetta, can you read the next part? Don't make too much out of everything. Well, anyway, I want to tell you also how the body is your enemy. I must warn you, it is not your friend the way it was when you were a youngster. For example, greens, believe me, are overrated. Some people believe that will cure cancer. It is the star. My experience with maybe a hundred patients proves otherwise. Greens are helpful to God. That follow Sandberg, the poet. I believe from Chicago, explain it. Grass tiptoes over the whole world, holds it in place, except the desert. Of course, everything there is loose, flying around. How can you, can, can you bring up God so much? When I was a kid, you were a strict, strict artist. You even spit on the step of the synagogue. Atheist. 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 Oh. Atheist. Atheist. Um, and so that's somebody who doesn't believe in God. Atheistic, without God. Um, you even spit on the steps of the synagogue. Okay, good. Uh, questions here. Uh, this is a little bit tricky. This is kind of poetic. He's not being very clear. Um, He's saying, yeah, obviously when you get old, your body will start to betray you, do things that you don't want it to. And he talks about greens and saying it's like grass holds the worlds together, holds everything in place. Um, Mahmoud, can you read the next part? Okay, well, God is very good for conversation. He said, by the way, I believe I have to tell you a few words about the stock market. Your brother-in-law is always thinking about how brilliant he is. Investing, investing, my advice to you, stay out of it. But people are making money a lot. Read the paper. Even kids are becoming millionaires, but what of tomorrow? He asked. 
tomorrow I said they'll make another million no 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 I mean tomorrow I was there when tomorrow came in 1992 so I say to them and their millions ha 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 tomorrow will come come home now I have a great deal more to tell you somehow I am always tired go home now go home now yeah, and not come home now. Go home now. So he's done talking to her for the day. Nineteen twenty nine. Nineteen twenty nine. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I mean. Um, and then this part. But people are making money. People are making money. People are making money. People are making money. Yeah, we want to emphasize the R because it's italicized. Uh -huh. yeah, people are. People are. People are making money. Good. And Heidi, can you read the next part? I'll go in a minute, but I have to tell you something. Pa, I had to tell him that my husband and I were uh, separating, maybe even divorced, the first in the family. What? What? Are you crazy? I don't understand. You, uh, you, you people no nowadays I'm sorry good I married your mother when I was a boy <laughs> I had a first class mustache nice. but I was a kid and you know I stayed married till the end once or twice she wanted to part com company but not me the reason of a a reason of course that she was inclined to be uh, jealous and he then gave me the ex example i heard five or six times before but it was one time two couples went to the movie uh, other mish and his wife you, you remember where well, i sat next to his wife the lady of the couple, by the way, a very attractive woman, and during the show, uh, which wasn't mm -hmm. so great, we talked about this and that, uh, laughed a couple times. Good. Okay. That was nice. Um, I don't think any questions. Again, remember to write your questions. Um, and Julieta, can you read the next part? When we got home, your mother said, Okay, anytime you want, right now, I'll give you a divorce. <laughs> we will go our separate ways, naturally, I said. What? Are you ridiculous? My advice to you, stick it out. It's true, your, husb it's true, your husband is a peculiar fellow, but think it over. Go home, maybe you can ma manage at least till old age. Then, if you still don't get along, you can go to separate old age homes. Pa, it is not a joke. It is my life. It is a joke. A joke is necessary at this time, but I'm tired. You'll, you'll see, in 30, 40 years from now, you get tired often. It doesn't mean you're sick. This is something important that I'm telling you. Listen, to live a long time, long years, you've got to sleep a certain extra percentage away. It's a shame. Good. Necessary. Necessary. And separate. Separate. Good. Um, okay. And so still doesn't look like there are any questions. Like I said, chat box for questions, um, but yeah, I guess it's pretty straightforward too. Um, and Mahmoud, can you read the next part? <clears throat> okay, you'll see in 30, 40 years from now, you'll get tired often. It doesn't mean you are sick. There's something important that I am telling you. Listen, to live a long time, long years, you've got to sleep a certain oh, extra... Oh, wow. I'm sorry. We already read that. Um, okay. Yeah. To live. Can you repeat to live? To live. 
Okay, good. And then, Jack, yeah, can you read the next part here? Okay, it was... Okay, it was at least three weeks before I saw him again. He was drink, drinking tea, eating a packed apple. One of 12 my sister packed for him every 10 days. I took another one out of the refrigerator. Refrigerator. Good. Uh, father and sons was on the kitchen table. Most, most of the time he read history. He kept Gipon and Prescott on the lamp, stand next to his resting chair. But this time, thinking about Russia for some reasons, in a kindly way, in a kindly way, yeah. he was reading Ter Turgenev. Turgenev. Yeah, Turgenev. Turgenev. Yes. You were probably pretty busy, he said. Where are the kids with the father? He looked at me. Hopefully, no hope. Bah. No hope. Uh, uh, no. So <laughs> she's getting a divorce, pretty much. Um, uh, about uh, probably, it's pronounced probably and or probably. I think probably, it's, probably. And sometimes I I, I listen to it uh, probably, not probably. Yeah, probably. That's probably, slang. Yes. Probably. You're probably gonna. Yeah. You could even leave out the B. Probably. You're probably gonna do it. That's like again pretty slangy. Probably. Probably uh -huh. is how I would recommend you saying it. Um, but yeah, they do sometimes leave out the buh. Um, most of the time he read. Read. And baked. Baked. Perfect. And uh, Heidi, can you read the next part? By the way, you know, the fellow, uh, to Targinus. He wasn't a show off. He wrote a certain book, and he became famous right away. One day, he went to Paris, and in the evening, he went to the opera. He stopped into the box, and just he, uh, as he was sitting down, the people began to applaud. The whole opera, ha whole opera house was clapping. He was known. Everybody knew, knew his book, he said. I see Russia is known in France. You are a lucky girl that these books are in the living room, more on the table than on the shelf. Yeah. Good. Uh, he stepped into his box. Uh, he stepped into his box. Yeah, good. And... Uh, Julieta? Yes. Can you read? Excuse me, also about uh, Tajanad. I don't believe he was uh, an anti Semite. Of course, most of them were, even if uh, they had brains. I don't think uh, Gorky was Gogol, probably. Tostoy no. Tostoy had an opinion about the Mexican American War. Did you know? Of course, most most were anti Semites. Dostoevsky, it was natural, it seems, are arch. Why? Is is it we read them with such interest and they don't return in favor? That's what women writers say about men writers. <laughs> Please don't start in. I mean, in the middle of telling you some things you don't know. Well, I'm telling you some things you don't know. Well, I suppose you to do you do know a number of gentles. Um, you are more in the American world. I know very few. Still, I was telling you, Jews, Jews, Jewish, but were not allowed to travel in Russia. I told you that, but a Jewish girl, if she was a prostitute, could go anywhere through all Russia, <laughs> throughout yeah. all Russia. Throughout all what Russia. Russia. Um, the only thing, ak, ak, ak. Yeah. Um, okay, really well done. Um, yeah, and um, Mahmoud, can you read the next part? 
okay. Yes. Start also. from yes. Oh, start from also. Okay. I. <laughs> Sir, can I mark there you it? go. Okay. Also, uh, Joey, if he was a merchant first class, even people with big stories uh, were only second class. Who else? A soldier who had a medal. I think uh, George. Do you know nobody could arrest him, even if he was a Joey? If he killed someone, a policeman could not arrest him. He uh, he wore a certain hat. Why am I telling you all this? Well, it's interesting. Yes, but I am supposed to tell you a few things. Give advice. A few last words. Of course, the fact is I am obliged obli because you are always getting yourself mixed up in politics. Because your mother and I were such a, such radical kids, socialized in constant trouble with the police. It was 1904. 5. 1904. 5. 1904. 5. 1904. 5. 1904. Yes, 1904. 5. Then let's look at socialists. Socialists. Um. Obliged. Obliged. Yeah. Obliged. Obliged. It's like uh, like refuses. Obliged. Obligated. Obligated. Obliged is obligated. I need to tell you because you're always getting mixed up in politics. Um, uh -huh. We're talking about Saint George. Saint. Saint George. Uh, stores. Stores. And a Jew. Jew. Do. Do, okay. do, do. Jew. It's a J. Jew. J. Jew. Jew. Good. It's okay. from Jewish? Right? Jewish, yes. A Jew is a Jewish person. Oh. Okay. And questions? No questions, I don't think. Again, try to write your questions in the chat box. Um. Uh. Heidi, can you start reading? Actually, I'm going to just mo uh, lower it. Um, Heidi, can you read the next part? You have the idea it's okay for you, and it's not okay in this country. It is a democracy, and you are running in the, the street like a fool. Your cousin saw you a few years ago in school, uh, suspended. Uh, sitting with other children on the, uh, in the auditorium, not allowed to go to class. You thought, Mom and I didn't know. Pa, uh, that was 35 years ago in high school. Anyway, what about Mom? You mentioned the Arzumish family. Uh, she was a dentist, wasn't he? She, right? A very capable woman. Well, mom probably felt bad about not getting to school and, you know, becoming something. Having a profession like Mrs. What's her name? I mean, she did run the whole house and the family. And the office and the people go coming to live with us. But she was sad about that, surely. Good. Okay, that sounded great. Um, is that maybe Mrs. What's her name? Mrs. What's what her name? What's her name? Yeah, what? it's a really common thing in English if you don't remember somebody's name. Um, that like that. What's his name? Um, or Mrs. What's her name? Mrs. What's her name? Okay, and Juliette, can you read the next part? It was quiet. Then he said, "You're right." It was a shame. Everything went into me. So I should go to school. I should graduate. I should be the doctor. I should have the profession. Poor woman. She was extremely smart. At least as smart as me. In Russia, in the movement, you know, when we were youngster, she was considered the more valuable person. 
very steady, honest, made the first class contact with the workers, a real organizer. I could be only an intellectual, but maybe if life didn't pass quickly, speedy, like a winter day, short, you know, also she was very musical. She had the perfect pitch. A few years ago, your sister made similar remarks to me about Mama, questioning me like a history in my fault. Your brother only looked at me the way he does, not with complete approval. Then one day my father surprised me. He said he wanted to talk a little, but not too much, about love or sex or whatever it's called. It's troubling persistence. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, and so this is like a really sad part about like the dad just, or yeah, the dad feeling really bad about his wife. Um, yeah, the dialogue is definitely full of melancholy. Um, yeah, uh, he's, you know, he feels bad that she has kind of put herself below him. Um, and so uh, it's apparent that in what the daughter says and what her siblings say um, that that the mother was sad about it too and the dad's like kind of recognizing it um, yeah and then they start talking about sex which is love or sex or whatever it's called <laughs> and it's troubling persistence um, all right and Mahmoud can you read the next part yes He's, he said that might happen to me to eventually it shouldn't be such a surprise then a little occasional what was that occasional accusingly accusingly what the meaning of accusingly it, so if you're making an ac accusation if you're like saying it's somebody's fault like it's your fault in this case that I've been alone for so many years it's like yeah if you're accusing somebody of something you're Claiming that it is their fault, something uh -huh. is their fault. Mm -hmm. Okay, so keep going. Yeah. Uh, after all, I've been a man alone for many years. Did you ever think about that? Maybe I suffer. I suffer. Did it? Did it even enter your mind? You are a grown-up woman after all. But Pa, I won't ever have thought of pranking up. A anything like that you and mama were so damn pur puritanical <laughs> puritanical puritanical what the meaning of that it's like really rigid and strict and not you know not talking about anything that's you know like drugs or sex or alcohol or anything like that being puritanical is like really straight and upright and strict uh -huh. straight yes Okay, I never heard you say the word sex till this day, <laughs> either of you. We were serious socialists, he said so. He looked at me, raising one nice thick eye pro. You don't understand politics too well, <laughs> do you? I, I had thought of it now and then. A sexual aloneness, I was a gone up woman, but I turned it into tactful questions. Aren't you sometimes lonely, Pa? Okay, let's look at grown up. Grown up. Uh huh. Uh, I suffered. I suffered. <laughs> Sorry, suffered. Suffered. Good. Um, okay, good. Uh, that sounded great. Um, and. This is what he answers. Uh, Heidi, can you read this next part? I have a nice apartment. Then he closed his eyes. He rested uh, his talking, uh, talking self. I decided to water the plant. He opened one eye. Take it easy. Don't overwater. Anyway, he said, only your mother, a person like her, could put up with me. Her uh, patience, her patience, you know, I was always losing my temper, but finally I was asked everything was all, all right, all right, accomplished. 
So do you understand? Uh, your brother and sister finished the college, married. We had a beautiful grandchild. I was working very hard, like a dog. We were only 50 years old then. But look, my bought the place in the country. Your sister and the brother come often. You, you yourself were uh, came often. You yourself were running around with a dozen kids in a bathing suit all day. Your mom, your mom was planting all kinds of flowers every minute. Three the trees were growing. Good. Let's look at came. Came. Yeah. Okay. And really nicely done. Again, if you don't have any questions, let's keep going. Um, Julieta, can you read the next part? Your grandma, your babushka, sat on a good good chair on the lawn. In back on hair of hair were birch trees. I put in a nice row of spruce. Mm -hmm. Then one day in the morning she came to me, my wife. She shows me a spot over her left breast. I know right away. I don't touch it. I see it. In my mind, I turn it this way and that. But I know in that minute, in one minute, everything is finished, finished. Happiness, pleasure, finished. Years I had that black. No, that minute had been told to me a couple of years ago, maybe twice in ten years. Each time it nearly stopped my heart. No. He recovered from the telling. Now, listen. This means, of course, that you should take care of yourself. If I don't mean eat vegetables, I mean go to the doctor on time. Nowadays, a woman as sick as your mama could live many years. Your sister, for example, after terrible operations, heart bypass, colon cancer, more she probably hides from me. Good. Can you repeat vegetables? Vegetables. Good. Um, other than that, really well done. Um, so the mom died of breast cancer um, is what we're getting here. Um, so he's a doctor. He diagnosed her. Obviously, he noticed when she showed him the spot um, that she had breast cancer. Um, and so he's telling the daughter, his daughter, to check herself. Um, and let's have uh, birch is a type of tree. It has white bark, and it has green leaves that fall in the, the fall. <laughs> and a spruce is a type of evergreen tree. So it's one of those like triangle trees that are green. That's a spruce. Um, mm -hmm. and so those are just two types of trees. Um, Mahmoud, can you read the next part? She's running around to theater, concerts, properly supports Lankling Center, Palette Chamber, Symphony, uh, three, four times a week. But you must pay attention. One good thing, don't laugh, is bananas, really potassium. <laughs> <laughs> I myself eat one every day. Uh, but seriously, I am running out of advice. It's too late to beg you to finish school, get a couple of degrees, a decent profession, be a little more strict with the children. They should be prepared for the future. Maybe they won't be as lucky as you. Well, no more advice. I restrain myself. Now I am changing the whole project. I will ask you a favor. You have many friends, teachers, writers, intelligent people, Jewish, non-Jewish. These days I think often, especially after telling you the story a couple of months ago about my brother, Grisha. Good. Jews. Jews. Good. I think that sounded good. Um, we say ballet, Thank though. You. Ballet. Palais, uh-huh. Uh, Palais, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, that sounded good, though. Um, Thank you. And 
let's have so about the brother Grisha. Heidi, can you read the next part? I want to know what happened. Oh, sorry. Not my fault. What Keep happened going. to him? I guess we know he was uh, deported around 1922, right? Yes, yes. But why did they go after the, after him? The last 10 years before that, he calmed down uh, quite a bit, um, had a nice job, I think. But that's what they did, did you know? Even after the Palmer uh, raid, that was maybe 1990, 1919. They kept uh, deporting people. They picked them up at home at the Russian artist club at, at meeting. Of course, you weren't even around yet. Maybe just born. They thought uh, that this kid had uh, in mind a big revolution, like in Russia, some joke. Uh, ignorance. Uh, Grisha and his friend didn't like learning from the beginning. More uh, back then, Emma Goldman, her boyfriend, I forgot his name. Good. Ignorance. Ignorance. Um, okay, really nice job. Um, Bakunin, Berkman. Um, yeah, so Grisha and his friends didn't like him. It was more Emma Goldman's boyfriend, Bakunin or Berkman, whatever his name was, um, who liked Lenin, uh, if that clears it up a little bit. And hi, Juliet, can you read the next part? Right, they were shipped, I believe, to Vladivostok. There must be a file somewhere. Our archives salted away. Why did they go after him? Maybe they were mostly Jews. Anti-Semitism is the American blood from Europe. A little thinner, I suppose, but why didn't we talk? All the ears not talking. Me? Seeing sick people day and night, strangers, and not talking to my brother till all of a sudden is on a ship gone. Go home now. I don't have much more to tell you anyway. It's late. I have to prepare now all my courage, not for sleep, for walking in the early morning, maybe 3 or 4 a.m. I have to be ready for them, my morning visitors your babushka, your mama, most of all, to tell the truth. It's for your aunt, my sister, your youngest, youngest. She said to me that day in the hospital, don't leave me here, take me home to die, and I didn't. And her face looked at me that day, and many, many mornings looks at me still. Yeah. Waking. Waking. The archives? Archives. Good. Yeah. Just getting really sad. Um, but let's have uh, Mahmoud. Can you finish the story? Yes. Uh, I stood near the door holding my coat. Space at least for, at last for me to say something. My mouth open. Enough already, he said. I had that job to, uh, to tell you how to take care of yourself, what to expect about the heart. You know, it was not a metaphor, but in the end, a great thing, a really interesting thing, would be to find out what happened to our Grisha. You're smart. You can do it. Also, you'll see, you'll be lucky in this life to have something you must do to take your mind off all the things you didn't do. Then he said, I suppose that is something like a joke, but my dear girl, very serious. Yeah. Uh, can you repeat metaphor? Metaphor. And at last, a space at last. Last. Um, good, and that's the end. Um, What's the meaning of metaphor? 
a metaphor? Who can, uh, Heidi or Julieta, do you guys know? One metaphor three. is a way. Go ahead. Um, metaphor is mm -hmm. a rhetorical speech, and uh, uh, when you use a thing to to say something, something else. For example. Mm. A butterfly can be a metaphor of. Mm, freedom. A butterfly can be a symbol of freedom. Uh -huh. um, but you could if say, I say he has a butterfly. That's a simile. If you say he's a butterfly on the soccer field, it means you're comparing him to a butterfly. If you say he's like a butterfly is a simile, and if you say um, a butterfly is a symbol for freedom, is a symbol. <laughs> um, yeah, or like a butterfly, yeah, yeah. So that's a metaphor is when you're talking about, you're like com comparing something else, or you're describing somebody with something. Um, I got it, yes. Yeah, and... Yeah, so when he's talking about holding your heart, he's saying it's not a metaphor. You actually have to hold your heart. Um, it's not like a metaphor for something. Okay. Uh, yeah, and so that's the story. It's it's kind of sad. It's really sad. Um, also, uh, semi-autobiographical. She writes a lot about her father in fiction. Um she actually dies of breast cancer, which is awful, um, mm. <laughs> which is just the worst, because her mother did too, and her dad obviously, I mean, seems to be warning her about it, um, and she just never got checked. And, yeah. Um, anyway, that's the story. Hope you liked it. I really love this writer. She's got a great, uh, great eye for dialogue. Mm, hopefully you liked it as well. That's the end of class. Um, do you guys have any questions? She is, she is um, um, mean, what time we are, 50? Yeah, I'd say she's about 50, maybe 45, 50. No, I mean, 90, 50? Oh, um, gosh, I don't even know. Um, sorry, um... She died in 2007. She was born in 22, 1922. Um, so, yeah, I'd say she was probably writing in the 50s and 60s and 70s. She probably wrote till late. Um, she had a long life. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. And, yeah, any other questions? Um, yeah, well, thanks for coming in again, and hopefully I'll see you guys soon.